Hi guys, Dane and Biggie here, and today we're coming at you from a slightly different angle because the cat wanted to sit on the edge of the sofa, so we thought, why not? Alright, well it is a Wednesday, oh no, hello, where are you going? Where are you going? Oh, shit! Well, in that case, I'm going to move the camera back to my normal angle. Now, as you may have noticed, it's a Wednesday, which means it's time for another episode of Five Bookish Facts. Today, we are taking a look at another request from Catalyst Reed. Seriously, somebody else, please make a request, otherwise I'm just doing videos for Michael indefinitely, basically. But anyway, we're doing another request, and that is... Sir Arthur Conan Doyle, the creator of Sherlock Holmes, he's also the author of The Lost World and various other books that you can kind of see in my pile here. I'm going to put these down now. So without further ado, let's get straight into it. So Sir Arthur Conan Doyle was actually kind of not the first motorist, but he was a very early adopter of the motor car. So he actually bought a car without ever having driven one. So he had no idea what he was doing. And in 1911, he took part in something called the Prince Henry Tour. So basically the Prince Henry Tour was created by Prince Henry of Prussia. And the goal was to compete between British cars and German cars. So Sir Arthur Conan Doyle actually entered the race with his second wife, Jean, as his co-driver. So Conan Doyle was a sporty chap and he actually played on the same cricket team as J.M. Barry, who is the author of Peter Pan. On the subject of J.M. Barry, the two writers actually worked together on a comic opera called Jane Annie. And Doyle was also friends with a number of other famous people, including Robert Louis Stevenson and Bram Stoker, the author of Dracula. Now, we're not finished on this fact yet though, because this is a fact about sportiness after all. So Conan Doyle is also credited with helping to popularise skiing because he was an early advocate of that. And he also played in goal for an early incarnation of Portsmouth Football Club. So this was actually before it was Portsmouth Football Club. He paid, played for the amateur side that was the precursor to Portsmouth. So fact number three, his copy of his first ever book was lost in the post. So he set out and decided to rewrite the entire thing from scratch again. So he wrote this book at the age of 23 and sent it off to a publisher with the hopes of getting it published, but alas, it went missing. It didn't actually make it to its destination and nobody knows what actually happened to it. Still, he was kind of determined to make it as an author, so he set out to write the entire book from memory and he did about 150 pages of it before eventually just giving it up and starting work on a different book instead, which went on to become A Study in Scarlet, the first Sherlock Holmes novel. So obviously I've mentioned that Conan Doyle had a number of famous friends. He was also friends with uh, Houdini as well, but they had kind of a love-hate relationship and they eventually fell out. So in his later years, Conan Doyle got really into spiritualism and mediums and fairies and things like that. And Houdini was kind of a rationalist who thought it was all a load of bomb. The tensions between them actually hit boiling point. So what happened was Conan Doyle's wife did a seance with Houdini present and uh, basically claimed to have been possessed by Houdini's dead mother and she actually wrote out this message. But the theory was here that Conan Doyle's medium wife had been possessed by Houdini's dead mother and she'd taken control over the woman's hand to write a letter. But afterwards Houdini pointed out that the letter was in English and his mother only spoke Yiddish. And after that the kind of the friendship between the two men was ruptured. After that they actually kind of stopped speaking to each other as well and they had kind of public feuds in the newspapers and so all in all it wasn't a very pleasant time. Just on the subject of Conan Doyle's beliefs as well so there's a famous photo of supposed fairies in a garden and uh, Conan Doyle took this as again as proof that that fairies existed and were a real thing and it wasn't until after his death that the original creator of the photograph came forward and admitted that it was a fake. He actually even wrote a book about it as well called The Coming of the Fairies. And fact number five, and this is a very sweet one. So he died on July the 7th, 1930, which is actually surprisingly recent. I think a lot of us kind of picture him as, as being around before then. When he did die, he died in his garden and he was holding a flower and his last words were said to his wife. He said, you are wonderful. So there we have it. Those are five facts about Sir Arthur Conan Doyle. Please do leave a comment to let me know what you'd like a future episode on, whether it's a book, a series, a genre, we can do literary awards, anything bookish, we'll give it a go. So yeah, please do leave a comment, hit subscribe if you'd like to see more bookish videos, and I'll see you again for another video sometime soon. Thanks a lot, bye.